Hello and welcome to the next community update number 16 of the 10th of August of 2014. Welcome everybody uh, and uh, glad to have you. Um, today we're doing a recap on the talk that John Middleton did last week, but uh, fortunately we had some uh, problems with sound at that moment. So uh, we're glad that he can join us again, so we can actually hear this time what he has to say to us. Also, we have on board Tom Mahoney, CEO of TextCoins Now. Um, as some people may know, not everybody may know, some people may know that uh, there has been some controversy on the forum uh, concerning the asset that was issued in that name. Tom is here to uh, explain a bit of the background and, and the situation from his side. We're very glad to have you on here, Tom. Thank you so um, much. Yeah, I think it's very important that we get some uh, some issues cleared so that everybody knows who is what and what the status of TextCoin now as a company is. Okay. Um, I also will be talking a bit about the secureassetexchange.com site which I uh, put on the forum today because they are doing some very exciting things. I talked yesterday to the CEO, founder of this uh, site, Sergey from New York, and I really want to share that with you. And Dave Pierce, Evil Day, will probably drop in at some point with some news on exchanges. Um, I'd like to start off with you, John. Um, we talked last week about things that were happening on the Isle of Man, uh, things that, that are of interest uh, to Next in cryptocurrency in general. Uh, could you first please uh, tell the viewers who you are what, in, in general terms, and then basically the floor is yours. Yeah, sure. Hi. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is John Middleton. I, I live in Alamann. I have done for a number of years. I'm a director of a fiduciary company, which is a company that manages and incorporate trusts. We work in a wide range of sectors, shipping, personal, um, corporate, um, a lot, large, large kind of areas. But I've got a personal interest um, in, 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 in cryptocurrencies. Um, I, I used to work, in, I used to be a programmer, uh, and I've done that before. Um, so um, basically, I had an introduction um, to, to, to cryptos um, through TextCoins Now, when their representative at the time, um, Lee, came over and sparked some interest. Um, so I, I've been looking into this and get, getting involved in things. Um, lot, lot, of, lot of interest at the moment. Uh, there's a crypto summit um, in September, which I, I am attending on behalf of Next House, who I'm working with. Um, and uh, I believe there's also, um, with probably two other um, people from, uh, from from Next House, Bit House, um, and also I believe there are three other people who will be attending that conference. So we'll have six people uh, there representing uh, Next uh, related projects. Um, I thought I'd just explain what the situation is in, in the Isle of Man as well. Isle of Man is a, um, uh, a dependent territory of the British Isles. It's got its own parliament, it makes its own laws, um, and it's it's mainly independent of the EU, um, apart from certain matters. Um, firstly, in relation to value-added tax, when it's closely aligned to the UK, and secondly, for agricultural policy. Um, we set our own taxes and we make our own laws. Um, the Alaman government has expressed an interest um, in... Um, jurisdiction for uh, unregulated cryptocurrency businesses. Um, so that's where we're at. Um, what the government have said um, is there are two areas in which they're going to they're not going to be their intention to do prudential regulation of crypto businesses. That's to say they're not going to regulate them like banks or insurance companies. What they are going to require is that those businesses implement anti-money laundering controls. So the proposal is that before the end of the year, um, they will be what's known as, um, um, in our Proceeds of Crime Act, they will be known as what's called a regulated sector. So certain types of crypto businesses um, uh, will need to identify their clients and implement anti-money laundering controls. 
Um, and there, there is some active work going on in that. Um, in terms of who is going to supervise the activities of a, of a crypto business, the only activities which will be supervised at this stage, as proposed, um, will, be the, will be the anti money laundering activities. And they will be supervised by the financial services regulator. Um, a lot happening in the Isle of Man. Um, there's been discussion about a new alternative coin that's going to be uh, going to be set up. Um, there is a, 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 a an ATM company doing Bitcoin dispensers, um, which is um, uh, is going to, to to have some Bitcoin machines uh, in, in place in the Isle of Man. Um, there are uh, there's a, an exchange um, called Coin Corner, uh, which opened about a month ago. Um, there's another exchange which is just about about to launch, um, and of course the plans for Next House, which I'm involved in, uh, we're also planning, amongst other things, to, to launch an exchange in the Isle of Man. Um, so interesting times, a lot of interest in this area, um, and um, I'm very excited to be involved in it. And I think there's a, a real positive commitment from the government to to provide a effective um, uh, effective and well regulated home for cryptocurrencies in the Isle of Man. Okay, thank you. Um, it, as as a point of interest to people who are who are watching from uh, next uh, from from uh, the next companies, for in, uh, for instance, if people are interested and and want to take steps uh, toward, for instance, uh, establishing themselves on on the Isle of Man, or at least getting into contact, what are the things they could do? Well, I mean, the, 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 there is a, a number of things. I mean, first of all, um, you can incorporate a company in the Isle of Man. You can establish operations here. Um, and it's just thinking about what's best your, for your business, really. You can clearly establish a real business here, rent offices, um, employ staff. That's one option. You also can use a company for invoicing or service principles. So there's a range of there's a range of options there, really, depending on how whether you want to have staff here or whether you, you, you don't. So quite a complicated area um, on there. And of course, the, the, what's the best thing for your business depends on your circumstances. And I, I mean, I work for a company that provide these services, but um, I'm quite happy to provide services outside of that independently to people free of charge. If someone's got an idea, they can come to, to see me, and I'll. Um, I'll make some suggestions if they then decide to, to work with my business in doing that. My, my profession is a chartered secretary. I'm a chartered corporate secretary. Um, I can help them with that or if, if I can refer them to other businesses. Um, I know people who can rent office space. I know other people who work in this area, lawyers, accountants. So I can put people in touch. So um, and, and also some market makers, for example. So I know quite a lot of people interested in this and by all means, they can talk to me and I can see how um, I can best point them in the right direction or even provide services to them if they, they so wish. And in what way can people get in contact with you? Is it via the forums? Is it via Skype? Any other way? Um, yeah, I mean, it, that, that, that's, I'm also on the, uh, the Next Legal um, website. If you go into the Next Legal um, website, you'll see I'm there um, uh, with Marcos. Um, I'm a quite, I'll, I'll, if you like, I'll, I can post my um, my, de my details, and they can they can be posted um, online. I'm quite happy for people to contact me um, um, through Skype or whatever. I'm, I'm happy to take uh, a, a, any questions, and, 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 and I'm happy to field those. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thank you. Um, there'll probably be some next questions uh, after our next bit. Um, I would like to first uh, a short intro. Um, we have, as I said, Tom Hoggy from TechPoint Now on here. Um, for people who don't know, this week we had we had a bit of a weird situation. One of the assets that we had on the asset exchange, which was uh, quite popular on there, um, went under for a, a number of reasons. Um, there was. There was quite a bit of panic uh, about that, and um, basically, this is the reason why we asked Tom Mahoney, who's the CEO of, of Texcoin now, to explain his side of what happened. So, at least the investors in that asset also know what's going on on that side and what the status is. Tom, 
Um, could you do a very brief introduction, just short as you want, want it to be, and uh, basically say what your take on this whole situation is? Uh, my name is Thomas Mahoney. I'm the CEO of TextPoints Now. We're a company. We've been in business about three and a half years. We used to be Tex Cash now. Now it's TextPoints. We have a generic interface for consumers to interface with cryptocurrencies. That's what we do. Uh, we had a, a lead grant with representing us as uh, in sales and in the company. And uh, we had some, he made some we were getting funded by him for some development, and it. Uh, we, we, he's a very enthusiastic person, and he created these things, and we didn't manage them, or uh, we put some links on our website for him, and they ended up. Uh, we got a very, very, very tiny percentage of the funds that came in, and what we discovered that there was many, many projects that our name was used on that we did not know about. Uh, we then parted, parted ways and he, I don't think he did it maliciously, I just think he's not a good manager of money. So I think that's what happened. So he tried to send us some money, uh, about $2,000 last week and we refunded it promptly too. So any questions? Or Well, yes, my microphone uh, didn't work. Um, yes, uh, basically, um, basically from my side, um, so these actions that, that were taken were, uh, you, you didn't know about them, basically the things that, that uh, the name was attached to. Which actions that were taken? Hey, could you please mute? So when you when you get the card amount, then you email it to me. She she wants to handle all the future payments. Okay, so I'll just give it Yeah. I thought you had to ask. Yes, I can still hear um, so the, um, the things that the main text points now was used on, you uh, weren't in front of that. At first, they did the us money and we used it to build out the product and get added in the coin features into the cash product. We worked on that. Um, you can leave in other places and other things, and when we found out about it, we uh, did be involved with all these things, and then uh, we didn't have an accounting of what money was gathered in our name either. Uh, we had a very, very tiny amount. Uh, he was he was handling um, delegation for programming resources, and. Uh, when we found out what was actually involved, we uh, we uh, separated ways. That's it. Uh, can can I just just say something um, on that? I mean, as, as I understand it, um, uh, the the people invested in the asset exchange were investing in in the asset on the asset exchange. Yet they didn't have any connection with your LLC, which is a Delaware LLC, which is your right. own company. Yeah, I just thought yeah. I just. That's correct. Yes. Okay. I, mean, I don't think Lee was being malicious. I think he just wasn't a good manager. Seriously. Yes. So, so basically, he's miles an hour all the time. He's a really good salesman, but he gets excited. That's what that's what happened. He just lost track of everything happening. Okay. So, so you, you're basically saying you don't think there was a scamming intention involved? I do not. No. Over enthusiasm. Yes. He was paying the programmers. He was doing his part. He was doing that. We didn't know the scale of investment. That's the issue we had. Okay. That's uh, good to know. Could you, because the other side of it, of course, is that TextCoins now is a real project and is a real company. Could you, um, could you tell us what you can tell about TextCoin now to us and where, what's the position 
what's also the interesting part for the NXT community in there? For the NXT community, we offer, I'm not going to tell you too much, but uh, we, we offer a lot of nice things. So we offer a little marketplace where people can have profiles and can be used for multiple things. It's a hashtag-driven hashtag marketplace. So it can be used anything for microfunding of charities to collecting of money for the Blue Cross or, uh, I'm sorry, not Blue Cross, but the Red Cross. And uh, so it's a, or for emergency use to take cryptocurrencies or to generate local agents that can go on there and cash coins for you. It's an application that runs on the phone and it runs on a website. We have geolocation built into it so you can say where is somebody and have a map and see the local agents and find them. It's, uh, we also do ATM support too. We have an interface there. So we have an internal blockchain, so there is no resolving the blockchain for transactions. So all transactions are instantaneous. So it opens up where you can pay for things with your phone uh, instantaneously. So you can pay for getting your hair cut or uh, anything you want to do. Or normally you'd have to wait for the, for the uh, blockchain to resolve. It's, it's, it's pretty... It's, Working, it's been working for a while. We have escrow built in. It's an additional 1% you have escrow. Um, we're adding multilingual to it now. We're running at a couple of languages, Greece, French, and four particular things we're working on. And uh, that's it. It's IVR driven. You can say set pin and you can record your voice and you can then create a pin to use and you can confirm your purchase with a phone call and enter a pin if you want an extra level of security or we uh, uh, delegate a code that you have to return to us. It's spoof proof. So it's it's a simple way for consumers to use a very technical thing like a next point as a form of uh, currency. Any questions? Yes, I'm throwing the floor open here. Any questions? Well, I don't have many questions as such, but I'd just like to quickly, how's my sound? Wonderful. If there, okay, but it seems to be a little bit laggy, so to speak. Anyway, I've turned off my video, so this is pretty much the best it's going to get on my Swiss mountain side. Well, um, so can I summarize the situation as being, Lee was a slightly over-enthusiastic possible idiot with his acid issue but and that could have created an issue for text coins now themselves being as they you guys are a US based company so now that Lee has stepped away from text coins now and now that the um, the next investors who went into text coins now are in the process of being compensated we are now in a stage where we can move forward in a further cooperation with text coins now. Obviously, we're not going to be the only currency on text coins now, as I believe that you guys are going to be listing around about 15 to 20 other currencies. Right. But I think that this is a very, very positive step for Next to actually be listed on your platform. The possibilities for this in the developing world are absolutely huge. The ability for simple fiat transfer or cryptocurrency transfer with a simple SMS from a very basic handset is absolutely amazing. The size of that market is, well, incredible and that could make an incredible difference for Next and all the other cryptos listed on your platform. And also the merchant services. That's something that I really want to work on in the future. The idea that you can just walk into your hairdresser, press the little button on your handset, pay for your haircut in Next, walk back out again, everybody's happy. Especially from the point of view of the hairdresser. The way I understand it, setting up a merchant account on text coins now is as easy as sending a couple of SMSs. Would you like to talk about the possibilities for merchant accounts? Yeah, uh, uh, sign up is automatic actually. If I send you money, you, uh, you have an account and that's how easy it is. You now have your coins, they're transferred from one account to another card in the internal bank and you have an account. So you can then immediately send that money to your mother or someone else or a colleague and then you'll be prompted with a code to do that. If you want an additional level of security, you just set in, you text in, set PIN, and it will call you to record your voice and to read a key in a PIN. From that point forward, you will be 
uh, every time you make a, a transfer, you'll get a phone call. Hi, right, text my now. Uh, it will say the person's name if they record their name and the amount, and then you will then approve it with a, a PIN number here. It says thanks. You'll then get a text receipt. They'll get a text receipt. That's it. You can also escrow by basically you can do it in our web interface or you can do it on the phone. Just basically it's it's amount, dollars and cents, space, the phone number it's going to. International, no problem. Just put a plus sign in the country code in front of it. It's all done. And then if you want to escrow at the end, you put a uh, uh, asterisk and an E. You'll then get through the escrow system and we'll hold them, we'll hold them until you release them so the, people, the person knows you're serious because you've escrowed the, the coins for them. And then they can then, um, when, you, when you approve it, then the coins would then be released. So they remove your account, put in the escrow, and when, when it's done, it's moved. Now what we also do, let's say if somebody escrows it, they don't respond for three days, we'll do a reevaluation when the escrow is approved to make sure the correct amount of coins go for the dollar transaction if that's what they set it up for, or pounds or rubles or anything else. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's good. I mean, it's one of those yes, things. Absolutely. I'm, uh, yeah, I'm really happy and excited about this, to tell you the absolute truth. Great. It'd be nice to set up a demo. Actually, I quite like to. Um, I, I might actually try and get this working. Actually, just on the demo, I'd be interested to see it working. Yeah, send your phone numbers if you like, and I'll send you some. Yeah. Pounds or dollars, or whatever you do. Now, you can also have your local currency too. We we we, we fix it initially based on your code, so your country code. So if it's a forty-four, we set your pounds, but you can change it if you like. You can also change your currency. You can have both currencies. So you set one default currency, and that's your transaction are in. If you want to change it, you can CU equals, you can change that. Now, all this works on the website, too. So you can either log in on the smart app on the phone or on there, and you can do it you know, graphically as opposed to using text messages, too. Okay. Make sense? Yeah. You also have ATM uh, machine interface, too, and that's really easy for us because to set up an ATM machine, I'm telling you too much now, but to set up an ATM machine, you basically, they're just another account. Just like everyone else. So the ATM machine is an account. You go there, you put in your phone number on the ATM. There's a, there's a common programming language for ATM. They put in their phone number. Uh, they, they put in uh, the amount. They hit the button. They either get a phone call or an SMS. They approve it, and the machine spits out the money right away. There might be additional fee the ATM company might have. That's between them and you. They'll put the thing beforehand. But we res we uh, determine the currency every three minutes. Your phone feeds. So we, we're the same. There's no markup on exchanging or anything else. We just, that's, we just, we're the FedEx of moving coins. That's what we do. Make sense? Makes sense. Um, are there any uh, other questions from anybody else or comments? Yeah, makes a lot of sense. I think we should be uh, aware that Dave has a lag, so if we start talking, there's a fair chance that he starts talking at a later time. So, uh, um, for the invest for the investors in uh, Textcoin's now asset, which is now being taken off and basically destroyed in the Genesis account, um, I am dealing. I I just finished making the uh, complete accounting of all the assets that were exchanged. I will be handling this in the next week and then uh, talking to everybody to see what kind of uh, solution within the possibilities we can come to. I really hope that we can uh, make this work and at least uh, get people away with the feeling that they're at least at um, come away with something. So um, I'll, I hope that I'll be able to do that. And I also hope that this, what we're doing here, helps in some way at least to explain uh, the way it happened and what still is possible with text coins now, but obviously in a very different form. Yeah, hopefully through the... Uh Increased traffic on the, on the next coins through our system too. That the value of the coins of all significantly too. That's our hopes too. You're you're our primary number one on the drop down point that we we use. Yeah. Well, we could definitely use it at this moment. 
<laughs> okay, uh, Ty, I see that uh, you have come in too. Hello, welcome. Yeah, thanks. Uh, you know, I just got off work, so figured I'd jump in and uh, help out, you know, what I can. How you guys doing? We are all fine. <laughs> Is there uh, something you would like to bring up, Ty? Um, no, not not at this moment. You know, I was kind of stressed about work today, so I just got off, and uh, so I'm just uh, filling in, listening to in. Um, no, just pretty much everything he answered already. So I don't have any questions at this moment. Okay, that's good. Um, then another, at least last topic that I want to cover is um, what I discovered yesterday, and it may be interesting, uh, if you look at the community like we work at this moment, we're uh, constantly thinking that developments and sites need to come from the inside out. Um, yesterday I had a talk with Sergey from New York, he's the founder of a site called Crypto mail and a site uh, uh, which is called secureae.com and I was very surprised because um, secureae.com is basically a, a site with a front end um, where you can use the asset exchange, the next asset exchange and it's been it's been around for two months and it's actually fairly amazing what it can do one of the things that we, um, what you constantly hear in the community is basically that we need to be available for Joe Public, for Joe Average, for the for every man, and it's fairly hard with crypto. Any crypto has this this problem um, to be available for this target group. Um, if you look now at Secure AD, and I really would advise anyone. Uh, to look at it, secureae.com. They now have made it, for instance, possible to buy uh, assets on the asset exchange directly with Bitcoin. This is one of the things that, that we always had problems with. We needed to buy Bitcoin, then exchange Bitcoin to NXT, then do your research on an asset, then buy the asset. In between, you needed to create your own account, download a wallet, etc., etc. And anyone who is, who is involved in any kind of sales knows that any step that you build in that makes it more difficult to lose customers. And basically, in our case, we lose users. Um, I was I was really very very happy to see that secureae.com. You can just log in. You can make, it use it is it is coded partly by Wesley. Our uh, our front-end developer for, for the client. It doesn't uh, transmit your passphrase at any point. You can just click login, choose a username, it generates your password for it, and you're set to go. You can uh, put in any Bitcoin that you have, you can fund your account, start buying assets. But uh, the last week, I think, or two weeks, they also added functionality then you, that you can just click an asset, say buy, it calculates the price in Bitcoin, you can send it to a custom address, and it's bought. Nobody even needs to go to an exchange anymore. That's actually a very, very big step because now we can immediately access investors in the much larger crypto world and like it or not, most people still deal in Bitcoin. It's the default currency there. And it's, I think, a very big step that we can now tap into that market there. What they've also implemented, they do nice things with applications. If you look at the site, and if you at this moment look at the Coinomat asset, it's one of the, the more popular assets, they have also uh, put in the interface the amount of payouts they do for dividends. So if you're an investor and you want to know what the amount of payouts are and uh, how trustworthy the dividends are and where they go, 
you can immediately check this in their pages. So it's much easier to uh, check up on assets and see what they actually do. Much more surprising to me was that they also now have introduced basic smart contract functionality. Uh, this is something that with the coming of Ethereum, Ethereum a lot of people uh, were a bit panicked about. I think in next in this moment we have three projects which is which is a kind of smart contract. We have the real smart contracts um, project by Come From Beyond. Next AT is still being developed. Um, I heard that they are planning in September to go to a form of testnet. Um, but Secure AE also has already has basic smart contract uh, capabilities. And the nice thing is if you talk to Sergey, he actually is not thinking in terms of platform. He's thinking in terms of applications. So he doesn't create something that is next. He creates something that the consumer, the user, the, the, the investor can use. And that's much easier to talk about. Um, because it's the first question that most people will ask. Yeah, that's very nice. But how do I use it? Or what do I do with it? And the nice thing about this too is that Sergey is not someone who works within our community. He's not, he has an account on the, on the forum, but he doesn't really use it. So it's very nice to see that there are now people using NXT outside of the community, but developing some very, very val valuable tools, um, which I am quite sure that will get next much more accepted than, uh, than the projects the, that we are already seeing within the next community. Also, CryptoMail is, is the same thing. It's also a product uh, by, by Sergey, and it utilizes the messaging system for sending uh, safe email. These are all fairly s simple, but uh, needed applications which are very easy to explain to people. So for me, that's a very hopeful um, development to see that people that we don't even know that closely, they are very visible within the community, that they see the value of the next platform, and they are creating things within it that people can immediately use. Um, there are probably much more like these outside. Um, if there's, there's one, the chances are that, that other people are, are working on these things too. It's the same thing with Tom, with TextCoin now. This is also an application. <coughs> it's something that can be used, so it's much easier to explain to someone. That's basically my small, uh, small editorial. If you want to check these two out, these two out, I will put them in the in the YouTube channel, it's secureae.com, and it is cryptamail.com. Okay, um, Dave, I want to give the floor to you. Okay, well, hopefully the floor is now mine, and you guys can all hear me. Yes, we can. Okay. Damn, that is a lag. Okay, um, I've only got a couple of little things to deal with, really. Um, well, the main um, sort of news that I've been dealing with over the last few days, apart from um, text coins now, has been the exchange front, which is going pretty well for Next at the moment. Um, so, I'm just going to run through this fairly quickly. In the last week, HIT BTC have listed Next on their platform, uh, but so far only in a Next to Bitcoin market. But I understand that there will be Next to Fiat markets if the Next to Bitcoin market shows a reasonable amount of volume over the next uh, few weeks. And HIT BTC appear to be a very tidy, professional, 
and trustworthy exchange. So what I'd like to say is get some of your um, next and get on down to hit BTC and start trading on there. All exchanges suffer from the chicken and egg problem, which is that nobody wants to go and trade on an exchange with low volume, but until people actually start trading on the exchange, you don't have any volume. So I'd like people to actually get on to hit BTC and actually start using it. The same problem was facing another exchange, ccedk.com, which is based in Denmark, who are currently offering a massive range of fiat possibilities against Next. And they listed Next approximately two to three weeks ago now. And the trading volume there is picking up quite nicely, but they could still do with a little bit more encouragement. So if you want to trade any of your Next for fiat, or if you feel the urge to actually buy some Next in exchange for your fiat, CCEDK is a very, very good option. I'm also currently working on integration of Next into the markets at csex.com, which is pretty much a miners exchange. It's absolutely full of lots of quite obscure coins that are just starting out in the first mining phase. So at the moment they're listing Bitcoin and Litecoin as pretty much their main currencies, plus around a hundred or so coins that are quite obscure. For example, Robot Sex Nickels and Doom Coin. But I'm hoping that with a listing on Next here, quite a lot of miners will be getting rid of their mined coins on CSEX and then transferring them into a stable currency, such as Next, hopefully. Um, DGEX, which was the original Next Exchange, is back up and starting to work in about, I think about three or four days ago they actually came back up. They're having a couple of little hiccups with their new software and interface, but things are looking pretty good there. And our main Chinese exchange, Beta, had a little glitch a couple of days ago, which led, or was probably part of the cause for the recent price drop. Something went somewhat wrong with Beta's internal services. Something also went wrong with their order matching, and that caused a little price glit coin market cap, which then led to a small spate of panic selling. So I've just had a little look, and on pretty much all exchanges, Next is rising again. So that's good news for us. Um, that's pretty much all the news that I have on exchanges for the moment. So I'd like to hand back over to Baz or anybody else who wants to. Hey Dave, this is. Yeah. Hey Dave, um, I got a question for you. Yep. What um, is there a way for the uh, uh, the NXT investors and traders and holders and people who are interested in NXT, whenever they see a price drop like that, is there a way that they can tell that it's a glitch in the system and not you know people dumping or something? Because you know for some of the people that are new to NXT they are not aware of the knowledge that you have about uh, internal issues with the exchange and they may be afraid that the price is falling they go to dump which causes a panic and it just snowballs from there so what what can someone do before they you know make a decision to dump their coins or something how can they confirm that it's not a real is there any way um thinking about this well yeah, this is kind of the problem with all stock markets to do with due diligence, checking out your information sources and figuring out exactly what is happening on the market. I would say that if somebody sees a price drop and suddenly thinks, oh my god, the sky is falling, the best thing to do would be simply to go to the forum, which is uh, where they, um, nextforum.org, and simply ask there as to what's going on. There's a hell of a lot of guys there who are very deeply involved in exchanges, in some cases exchange operators themselves, and they can give you the genuine information about these things. Obviously, in any sort of trading market, and particularly in crypto, this sort of thing happens on pretty much a weekly or monthly basis. I mean, Bitcoin, for example, well, you, we all saw the... Uh, events of November 2013 when Bitcoin zoomed up quite happily to over $1,200 to immediately drop over the course of the next 10 days to something close to $400 at its absolute minimum. So this sort of volatility, it's something that people are 
Yeah, it's kind of a feature of the market, really. Of one course, there is... encouraging... Mm. Yeah, sorry, there's one thing that someone could do if they saw the price dropping, is he could buy some more. Take Always advantage of it. Yeah, sorry. that's... Uh... Yeah, that's, uh, that's another well, option, that um, because uh, what happens is um, uh, I see sometimes, uh, and not just in the NXT community, but with other um, altcoins and other cryptocurrencies, that whenever there's a dip in the markets, you know, there's a tendency to, to panic sell, and I always invite the, uh, the people that are holding on to the NXT that, to ask themselves, has the technology changed uh, fundamentally? Um, is the technology getting better? Is it getting worse? If it's getting better, then you might want to reconsider. Mm -hmm. Well, my personal strategy is basically to hold like crazy. I have complete and utter faith in Next. So for me, the recent glitch was more like, oh yes, my Next holdings have gone down. Oh well, my Next holdings are going to be going back up again pretty soon. And the overall tendency for Next is to rise. So I have complete and utter faith in our future. And that was me actually stopping talking there. Okay, that's that's all the questions I have. Okay, um, I am. Uh, I did get a question for Tom. Sure, if you are willing. Um, let me see. It's about um, the, the projects that Lee was doing that you weren't aware of. What uh, could you say anything more about that? What what kind of projects they were? Uh, carbon credits. Carbon uh, credits. Something there. Uh, restaurant. Uh, there was about five of them, and uh, five total. And they, they were using our name and such, so that's led us to uh, make take action. Yeah, and these are projects basically that he did on his own. That those are could be real projects, but they shouldn't have had the text coin now name. Yes, yeah, no, so no affiliation with us, but they okay. could be projects. I, I have no idea. No, that's okay. Then that that part at least is clear. Um, okay, I think we have hey, uh, some, yeah, time. Hey, uh, Bass, um, this is something that I just want to share with the, the uh, community. And uh, it's uh, something that we spoke about in, in uh, private. And I think that it uh, might be uh, good that, uh, you know, we just uh, spend a few minutes and talk about it so that other people that are new to the NXT community, they are protected and that uh, they don't uh, risk getting hurt or getting uh, scammed or any of that because that's so prevalent that, um, that, that you know, we want to make sure that when people come to the NXT community and they invest into it or they want to volunteer or participate in it, that they are protected and they feel safe about it. And um, one of the things that, uh, that Bass and I discussed the other day was that the amount of time, uh, there's like three or four things, um, and some of you uh, guys, uh, some of the guest panelists that are listening in, maybe you guys can uh, chime in also. Uh, that there's like three or four things that, that Bass and I dis discussed that will benefit the people that are new to the NXT community. Because when you first invest into NXT and you join the community, you may not be aware of who has integrity and who does not have integrity because in the forums you don't you don't get to see their face you don't get to interact with them and it's just all words and text and it's very easy for anyone to just type whatever they want so one of the things that I would suggest um, is that uh, before you make any kind of financial transactions with anyone um, you might want to check the amount of time that that person has had in the NXT community if they've only been in the community for you know, a couple of days, a couple of weeks, or a month or two, um, you just might want to um, uh, be cautious about that. Well, I'm not saying that that person is bad or they're, uh, they have uh, no integrity. Um, just, just be cautious um, because uh, when someone's new, uh, you don't know, okay? Uh, keep in mind that NXT came out in December of 2013, 
And if you look at some of the people that's been involved in NXT for a while, they've pretty much been involved since the beginning. So if it's somebody that's new, uh, just be cautious on that. The second point that I want to make is that um, find out who they are interacting with. We have um, you know several stakeholders in the uh, NXT community, such as you know guys like Pouncer, guys like Klee, and you know uh, that you know that's been around for a while. And you can check these guys for character references. So if, for example, you wanted to uh, work with me or with Bass or with anyone that's on this uh, um, uh, update at this moment, what I invite you to do is check around and, and get multiple. Uh, references and get multiple um, uh, background checks to make sure that the person is um, is credible and has integrity before you make any type of financial transaction with that person. Um, the other thing too, um, uh, in addition to the uh, character reference, is uh, number three is to make sure that they have a some type of stake in NXT. Okay and. By that, we all know that NXT is a uh, proof of stake coin, which means that you know the people that own the coins, the the NXT coins or the Next coins, they're the ones that you know help contribute to the network. So if someone does not have a a uh, a stake, and I'm not talking about like you know 50 or 100 uh, Next coins, I'm talking you know you know possibly in the tens, twenties, fifty, hundreds of thousands, or maybe in the millions. Okay, that they have personally um, acquired themselves uh, and not through a donation or something. So that's the third point that I would like to make is that the stake that they have. Okay, um, the fourth uh, point that I want to share with the people that are new to the NXT community is that is that person anonymous, um, with the exception of the uh, with the, the core developers uh, such as uh, Gene Luke and possibly. Uh, uh, come from beyond and 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 Wesley uh, and the guys that that everyone in the community has recognized from the beginning since inception. Um, anyone else that that you make any type of financial transaction or dealing with, um, it's recommended that you might want to talk to that person on Google Hangout or Skype or uh, so that you can see who you're you're talking to. Okay, so make sure that the person is not just completely anonymous. All right. Um, the, the last thing and the fifth thing is that that I wanted to uh, uh, cover, right, is that uh, the proof is in the pudding. Uh, a lot of people do a lot of talking um, and they make a lot of promises to do this and that, but uh, before you make any type of financial transaction, you might want to check their track uh, history of the things that they have uh, accomplished and provided for the NXT community. And that's that's all I have. If you guys want to add any other pointers to help the newcomers, because what we, we don't want to do, guys, is that we don't want people to come into the NXT and then get uh, uh, ripped off or get scammed or have some kind of misunderstanding uh, that can be simply avoided if they would just reach out to some of the more uh, um, uh, prominent members of the community or, or the well-known members anyway, and the, the problem can be avoided altogether. So, do you guys have anything to add to that, uh, Bass, Dave? Any of you guys? You know, and this is more for protection for the new people than anything else. Yeah, I mean, well, one if I can just. Oh. Okay, sorry. Yeah, one I thing say, I'd like. John, to say, take it away. Yeah, it, it, sometimes it's better just to see if there's more than one person involved as well, um, because uh, you know, if you're involved in a project, speak to more than one person, because most projects of any size would have more than one person involved. Um, and it's much better uh, in terms of controlling the risks, investing in any project if there's more than one person. Um, so um, that, that you know, it's very easy for, for one person to, um, to 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 misrepresent something, but it's more difficult when there's multiple people to uh, misrepresent things. So that's something I would look as well in a project. Also, you know, um, look at the, pre the 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 objectives, the original plan of the project, uh, and then. Look at how they deliver against those objectives. It's the same with anything in life, isn't it? Um, and the last point I'd make um, is that there is limited. Uh, if you invest in a, in a real company, um, there are recourses in law available, which are well known, and there are limited recourses in law available normally if you invest in a crypto project. 
That's me. Okay. Do you have anything to add to this, uh, Tom? Uh, I think you might want to have a verification process within the community itself. You can say that people are verified, and then if you had that, your team could verify people. That would be like a stamp of approval that they can then advertise in their offerings. That might be the way to it. Okay. Dave? Okay, allowing for my appalling um, lag here on the Swiss mountain. Yeah, John's point about one person projects is very important. Generally, scammers will tend to operate on their own. It is simply the nature of scammers, and it's a hell of a lot easier to run a scam with only one person than rather than with two or three or four. So that really is a good point to watch out for. Um, Google is obviously your friend. If somebody is trying to sell you 250 shares in the Brooklyn Bridge, it might be a good idea for you to Google and find out whether the Brooklyn Bridge is actually currently available for sale. Take your time with any investment. It's very rare that there is going to be a genuine investment where you have to invest now. If somebody is really pushing you into the investment and saying, oh no, this opportunity is going to disappear in two hours or 24 hours, that's another red flag. Any form of real pushing you into the investment can again be seen as a red flag. Just take your time, do due diligence, make sure it's not a one-man operation. If you can, talk directly with the guy who's running the project. And as I say, don't allow yourself to be pressured into doing something that you may regret doing later. Uh, that's my end of my speech. Um, I also want to add that um, it's um, it's uh, I, the way I look at it is that before I interact with someone that is uh, new to the uh, the NXT community or someone that's already in the NXT community, is that I like to look at it as from a bank's perspective. Even though the crypt it's ironic, but the you know um, the cryptocurrencies may be better than what the banks offer now. But when it comes to character references and background checks and things like that, the banks actually do a better job. Um, before they loan you $200,000 or a million dollars to buy a home or something, they do an extensive research and background check on you before they, they, uh, they do business with you. And you want to do the same thing uh, when you decide to interact or do business with anyone in the NXT community. Um, I, this is just me personally. Um, I'm speaking for myself only. Uh, not for Bass or for anyone else here, but I like to see someone be in the NXT community for at least 90 days or more. Uh, from my experience, that's usually when uh, a, a person's true character tends to reveal themselves, and that's when you can tell if that person is legitimate or for real, or if they are just bogus and are just trying to scam people. Because right now, the, 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 the cryptocurrency community is exploding and it's growing, and there is a lot of veterans in the community that prey on the new people and they will go from one coin to the next and the next and, and make it themselves look good and then once they scam someone then they move on to something else so just uh, be careful about that and when you guys hear someone drop names or character references if if you hear someone say that hey you know um, I have integrity or for whatever reason you know I've worked with Bass and I've worked with Ty and things like that you know uh, don't let the name drop uh, fool you. Actually reach out to me or reach out to Bass and confirm, hey, this individual said that they have worked with you on these transactions or these processes or these deals. Can you confirm that, yes or no? And if I have worked with them, I will confirm it. If I have not worked with them, I will confirm it for you also. Okay? So don't just let someone name drop uh, 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 another member's name or another person in the community and just believe it without reaching out to that person for reference. Yeah, I mean, can I, can I add something to that? I mean, um, part of my um, my job involves doing this, and I had a client um, last week who came to me and said he was working with some very prominent person, and I, I just thought, well, I looked at that, that guy's um, profile on LinkedIn, and there was no mention of this company. Uh, I rang the guy up and he says, no, I've never heard of this business. I've no knowledge. He was completely outside of the crypto world, but again, um, and then the guy disappeared once I made inquiry. So it's, uh, you know, just you need to, to look at any statements that are made and verify those assumptions. That's my view. Yeah, I'd like to add that too. Also, um, I'd like to add 
a bit more to what Ty is saying. The, the amount of time that people are in the community is, is obviously it's, uh, and, and active in the community, by the way, also important, is, is a good one. It's not the only one. We, and if you know Bitcoin Talk, uh, it's, it's known that people who are uh, who have huge accounts, basically hero members, these people still can stitch you up if they want to. It's actually also a known thing that you see in eBay. It's, uh, it's, it's farming for reputation and then cashing in on the reputation. The most important thing is do your due diligence. You're always, if you're allowed to, ask, if you're asked for money to invest, you are always allowed to investigate this. If a person gets a reference, you can follow up on it. Um, please do, I would say. Also, if you want to be really thorough, just look at other things people have done and see if they've followed through on those words. Those are always things you're totally allowed to do and draw your own conclusion. If there are enough red flags, even like if, it, if the deal looks really tasty, don't do it. That's probably the most important thing. If you don't feel comfortable with it after such a check, just leave it alone. Even if it turns out afterwards that it may have worked, um, then it's a high risk one. Yeah, and I just want to echo what uh, I think uh, John said, that that the time is, is very important. If anybody pressures you and tells you that, you know, you got to do it now, you got to do it now, uh, and, you know, the, in, in my opinion, in my experience, that's just a bunch of BS. You know, anything that's good today will be good tomorrow. You know, when Bitcoin was good at $50, it was good at 100 it was good at 500 you know, so it's not going to go away. Anything that's genuinely good in life lasts. It doesn't. It's just not good just for two minutes and then it's gone. Okay, I think that's a nice point to stop. Actually, um, I want to thank John, and Tom, and Dave, and Ty for being on. And uh, hopefully you'll, uh, you'll be willing, if you have uh, anything else to, uh, to tell us, to come on again. I really, I re personally, I really enjoy your perspective on, the, on what we are trying to do within Next, because it's an outsider's perspective for a large part, and that always helps. Um, it's also uh, an experience that, that we can certainly learn from. Um, next week, I, I still hope, if he's watching, to have Maxine for money payments on. He would be he uh, would have been on today, but he's been away apparently. And if anyone else wants to come on to the the hangouts, please contact me or contact Ty or contact Evil Day on the forums or on Skype if you have us, and we we'll, we'll be glad to have you. And uh, also, if you, uh, uh, in the future, guys, um, if you plan on uh, being on these uh, community, uh, the NXT community updates here, uh, please uh, have a microphone uh, available, uh, a good headset, because uh, your, uh, what you say will be transcribed and then shared with the community uh, moving forward in the future. So it makes it a lot easier for the transcription to happen when uh, you have a clear voice. Okay. Well, thank you. And for the rest till next week. Okay. All right, thanks for hosting this uh Bass. No problem. Thank you Bass, thank you. All right. Thank you. All right.